Morning, everyone. Um, we do have you in uh, muted right now, so we will be starting in approximately five to seven minutes, um, waiting on some more people to get in. Um, so we're just letting you know that we'll be starting. So if you are muted, so you will not be able to speak at this time, and we'll let you know in a second why. Good morning, everyone. Um, just to let everybody know you are in listen-only mode right this moment. Um, we will be starting here in about five minutes, um, waiting on several people to get in uh, and some technical difficulties on their end. Um, we will be starting as soon as possible.
Welcome, everyone. Um, just for those who are just now joining us, um, we're going to be starting here in just a few minutes. Um, we're waiting just a few more minutes for a couple of people that are having some issues getting in, um, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. shouldn't last about 45 minutes to an hour with a question and answer session that will follow afterwards. We're going to be starting in about two minutes. Good morning, everyone. So, thank you for joining our orientation webinar for Customer Connect. Um, a few things before we get started. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to be talking, uh, taking questions through the panel that was open when you entered the webinar. So, if you have any questions during the presentation, they will be answered by Sarah and Heath in that window. Uh, we'll have a Q and A session at the end of the webinar in the same format. Um, there's six, there are over 60 people attending the webinar, and outside noise and distractions have to be limited. So if you miss anything in the webinar, no worries. The webinar will be posted to the web after we finish processing the file, so you can have it for future references. All right, people, sorry about that. We had to actually change the microphones because the microphones weren't working correctly. Um, if you cannot hear us, um, go ahead and raise your hand up or something um, and let us know that you're having some issues. So just to let you know, again, we're going to be in listen-only mode. Um, if you miss anything, we're going to go ahead and record this and put it up on the Internet for you. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to be going over some of the features needed for marketing purposes in Customer Connect. We're also going to do some things through graphic mail. Um, so we're going to get you your leagues from USB-C. We're going to go over a couple of things with restarting your leagues and things like that. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in, and he and Sarah will answer them for you accordingly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go start with the leagues. Um, we've already put data into the database, um, so we're going to go like that. Um, the prior webinar covered putting basic data entry in, so if you haven't attended that webinar, no worries, it's out on the internet as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with your leads. Um, with USB-C data, you have to have at least one person in your database for that data to come down to you. So we are assuming that you have some data entered into the customer connect. If not, go ahead and watch the webinar, and I'll show you the basic data entry techniques for Customer Connect that we covered in the last webinar. So first, we're going to go over importing your USB-C data into Customer Connect. 
Now remember, you must have at least one person entered in. Now once a piece of data is entered into Customer Connect, the USB-C download is triggered and will be available within 24 hours. Once that data is available, you'll see on the screen here it says New League Data Available. If you'll click on that screen, it's going to take you over to the USB-C data, and it's going to show you all the leagues that are available at that time for USB-C. Now remember, these are not going to be all the leagues all the time. It's going to be whatever is available from USB-C at that time. Um, it may be that your local association hasn't put your data in yet, or they just haven't been released to us. So to import the data, what you're going to do is you're going to double click each one of these leagues in this set box that says update add league data, and you'll put an X in it. Once all of the data that you want is chosen, and you can not bring in leagues if you don't want them, you will check, check on the import set leagues here. And you'll notice there's an alert that says, please allow 24 hours for the changes to take effect. If you have over 100 people that are going to be imported, it will actually take 24 hours. It's a process that runs at night, and then the next morning, these leagues will actually come into your database. So if you hit OK there, and you go back to your league, this is where the leagues will actually show up once USBC puts the data into our database. What you're looking at here is all the leagues that are right now in Customer Connect. And you'll notice the start dates in 2011, which means the latest leagues haven't been brought in yet. Those will be brought in tomorrow morning. So I'm going to go over a couple of the icons here that you know, we have on this screen. You'll notice a little pencil next to your league, and that is how you actually edit your league. In the edits, you will be able to see the schedule begin. You'll be able to put the league president, the treasurer, the secretary in. You'll be able to change the league type, whether it's a social league, a sanctioned league, um, competitive, anything like that. You can actually put in you know, what the age ranges are or what the averages are, and you can actually make some remarks right here that will be saved. You can actually see the schedule and change the schedule. If you click on the league schedule here, you can actually change the schedule, and if you're bowling with the travel league, you can actually put more centers than yours in there. You can also add participants here, and we're not going to go too much into that because it was covered in the last webinar, but it is available for you so you can see the basic data entry. But what's here is it's going to show you everybody that's in that league, and you can actually add to them by just clicking on the plus sign and doing a search for a new bowler. So that's the editing function of the league. Now the two features that I want to go over with you today is the actual history of the league and the restarting of the league. The history of the league is actually all the sessions prior to this one that is available in Customer Connect. And you'll notice on the icons here, you have one that's not highlighted and all the rest that are. If it's not highlighted, that means there is actually no history for that lead, which means it's either a new session this one time here, or if we're actually going to be having uh, some other sessions back there. Um, if you do have history, if you click on the clock, it's going to bring up the history of that lead. The history here, you can actually go in and view the history, but you will not be able to change the lead schedule. Um, it's historical data, and it's data that's going to be stored in there. So that's the actual way to find your league rosters and history from the past. Now the restarting function, and what it does is it actually restarts a league. So if you have some non-sanctioned leagues that you've actually put on the floor, or if you actually want to start the league before the USB-C data comes in, you can click on the restart button. And let's just pick one up and hit restart. When you hit the restart button, it's actually going to bring up the regeneration of the league. And here you'll see that the date has went out one year from the day that it started last year. And it's 365 days. And then it, what it does is it goes to the, if it starts on Monday, it goes to the nearest Monday to that starting day and sets it as that. You can go over and change that in the scheduling function. 
Another thing that it's going to do is you'll notice there's no participants in there. In your prior lead and only attempt to return, you can either say whether they intend to return yes, you can say no or undecided. When you restart a league, the yeses and the undecided will be brought over into the new rosters. That way you can actually start the league with people in it. If they said no to an intent to return and you mark it in the prior session, they will not be brought over. So we'll go ahead and hit save. And what it's going to do is it's going to restart that league. And now you now have a new league up here called Rift Sign Ribs. If you go inside, you will see all the history and everything that that league just started. And you can start adding new participants to it and things like that. So it's really simple to restart the leagues. Again, you can wait for the USB-C data to come down or you can restart them yourself. If you restart them yourself, whenever the uh, data from USB-C comes out, it will actually merge those two together. So that is the simple way to do the league management. Um, you can actually go in here and sort the leagues and, and get rid of some of this. Um, the leagues go back as far as 98 on some of these uh, databases. And it, it just, you can go up here and start typing in the name of the league if you want to do some search. Or you can actually do a start schedule month and then just find the league you're starting at. It will just display them one day starting that schedule the month. So the league management, we just wanted to go over a little bit with the history and the restarting of leagues. Next thing I want to go over is the nuts and bolts of this. It's going to be the marketing section for Customer Connect. This is where you're going to pull all of your lists, your calling lists, your email plans, your text plans, things like that. And then you'll be able to send them out to outside vendors or actually make the calls or send them to the graphic mail, which is built into Customer Connect. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Marketing at the top, and we're going to take us over to the Marketing section. Here you're going to see email list, text list, mailing list, and call list. You can actually save all of your lists for future uses. And if you do that, anytime somebody comes in, and is entered in and they meet that criteria, that will actually be added to that marketing plan automatically. First thing we want to do, we're going to do a call list. We'll hit new. And you're presented with a screen here and on the left hand side you'll see all the criteria that you're able to search for. And then you'll see a blank grid to the right. So what we need to do here is we need to come up with some kind of criteria of what kind of marketing plan that we're actually doing. So in this one here, I want to start my fall leads up. So what I'm going to be doing here is we'll go to select all of our, our uh, fall leads here under select leads. And it's going to display all the leads that are available for me. You'll notice that they're all in different orders here. So if you just double click start date, it's going to bring the latest leads to the top. And what I want to do is I want to give all my fall leagues a call to let them know that their leagues are available and that they can actually do something and come in and vote. If we hit OK and then hit Find Matches, what's going to happen is it's going to search through all of my fall leagues and anybody that meets that criteria will actually be displayed. So 325 people bold in the leagues that I selected and it displays their phone numbers and their primary and secondary phone numbers. I'm going to save this by saying Fall Leagues and clicking the Save button. Now anybody that meets that criteria in the future will actually be added to that list and I can go hit the View Plans and I have my Fall Leagues button here and I can click the Edit. Now by clicking the Edit it takes me back in and this time it's going to display all of the people again. Now I've got a couple of options here. I can save it as a different kind of plan, or I can actually export this for my people to start calling by hitting Export Plan. And we'll just go call it All League, and we'll hit Save. So now that's an Excel file that I can actually hand out to my uh, personnel, and they can actually start making phone calls and marking it on the Excel sheet. Another cool feature that I can do is 
okay, I don't want to do just calls. I want to go ahead and do a mailing plan to these same people. To do that, all I do is come up here to the top where it says Save as Call Plan. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to call it a mailing plan. Then I'm going to hit Save. What this is actually doing is it's saving it as a mailing plan. And if I go to View Plans with Mailing List, I have this one in here. Now we're going to go over a couple of features inside the mailing plan. If you click on the pencil, of course, you can edit just like you did before. But if you click on the little envelope to the right, this is where you're going to set up your mailing letters or your labels. You can actually do a bunch of different defaults and things like that. If you hit the plan, it's going to bring up your choices, whether I want to print out labels or I can actually start a letter template. If I was going to do a letter template, maybe a reminder letter or something like that, I click on that and hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to bring up the editor with some predefined fields for us. So what you see in here is your information is already entered at the top. And all the fields here are going to be pre-populated. These are going to be pre-populated from the database itself. It's actually going to personalize the letter. And down here is where you're actually going to change this letter. You can go in here and say this is a reminder for your lead. Put the lead name or however we wanted to do that. You can also insert some merged fields like their contact information or the return addresses. Um, things like that. Um, you just have to play with it to find what kind of letter you want. You can also import letters that you've made in Word. Um, in Word, you can make anything you want, bring it in, and then personalize it inside of Customer Connect, and then save it so that you can use it again. So to save this letter, you just click on the Save As button and save the uh, letter to your desktop or anywhere that you save your letters to. And then you can actually use that letter again in the future. Okay. So, and then what happens is this: the program will actually go make each letter for each one of those 351 people. It will make a simple letter for it, and then you can start looking at the letters. And you can actually personalize one at a time, or do them all at once. And it'll just show you as you go through there, it's going to make a letter for each and every one of the 351. So that's how you're going to make your marketing letters. Another thing that you can do is actually make a uh, label. And by doing that, you just go over here to your default 5160 or 5161, whichever one you're using. We're going to choose the first one. And we will hit OK. What this is going to do is it's going to make a label for each and every one of those. Now remember that we don't want to send out to the same address. So Customer Connect is designed to send one label to each address. Um, in the future, we will give you the capabilities to say to the household of um, that is coming shortly. But right now, it's only going to let you send one label to we get rid of the duplicate uh, set. Now, once the labels are there, what you need to do is you can just hit the print button here. You can actually print it to a PDF and save it for later use as well. And that's how you're going to print labels. Now, if you were to change the criteria, let's say we wanted to delve down just a little bit more and say everybody that's in that league. you can actually go in there and say, I want just the male people in that league. And we can get to find matches. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the plan in 247 males now. So you can actually change the criteria. And then if you hit Save, it will actually save the new criteria there. So that is the way to do mailing labels. Now, you can actually save this as a email plan as well. 
by clicking in here and doing the editing. And what you can do is just make it an email plan as well. And then hit save. And you can go up to the view email plans. And now there's the fall lead for everybody that has an email address. We can actually send just the people that have an email address a email, letting them know the same thing that we're going to do and save ourselves a little bit of postage. A um, couple of things I want to show you inside of here. There's an exclude button here. If we don't want to mail to a certain person, whether we know that you know they're in the hospital or they're just busy or we don't want to mail something to them, we can take this and put the chat box in here. And it's going to exclude them from this marketing plan. Now, there's a section that I'll show you here in a second that where all the exclusions actually go to, and they will not be emailed to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this mail to this email plan that I put together, and we're going to send it over to an outside vendor. Now, there's two options here. The option that you have is you can send it to an outside vendor, or you can send it directly to Graphic Mail, which is our inside vendor that we're using inside of Customer Connect. If you were going to send it to a constant contact or another mail house, what you would do is you would have this export button where it says format, and you can change it to Excel or a CSV file. So if I was going to send this over to constant contact, I would change that to CSV, and I would hit export. And then I could name this Fall Leagues and save that. That is the file that you would go to Constant Contact or any of the outside vendors. And then what you're going to do is import that CSV file that you have. Once that file is imported over there, you can actually send from the outside vendor. But what I want to show you today is the vendor that we're using, Graphic Mail. Um, if you click on this button, Send to Graphic Mail, it's going to automatically send that over to graphic mail, and that list will be created over there. And now we're going to move over to graphic mail and show you exactly what you can see over at graphic mail. And when you get over to graphic mail, under your list and contacts, you go to the management. The list that we just sent over there is now over here, and we'll go down to So all the names and the email addresses that we pulled out of Customer Connect are in a list over at Graphic Mail, and now they're available for you to actually send a newsletter or an email to. So it's just a few minutes to open it up. So now you'll see the list and you'll see the uh, email addresses and things that you can actually do something. And you can actually go over here and delete some of these people or put new people in, make anything you want. The thing we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a newsletter to actually send to those people. To do that, we're going to do create from a template. Now I want to show you something here that they've done over at Graphic Mail for us. And they've actually put some bowling templates. So you're looking at the first one. This is the Halloween uh, theme that we put together over there that you can actually send out to your customers at this time. And what you're going to do is you're going to name your newsletter. Let's just name this one Halloween 2012. And we're going to save this to our email newsletter folder so that we can actually use this again in the future. The next thing we'll do is we'll hit no and this is going to take us to the editing of the actual newsletter. Now I'm going to show you something here of how to personalize each and every one of your emails that are going out. You've got placeholder for your uh, messages but right here we're going to go over here and we're going to click right up here to insert personalization. And we're going to choose the first name. What's going to happen here with this red section is 
is when we get ready to send this letter, it's going to take the first name of each contact and it's going to put it right there. So it's going to say Happy Halloween, Tom, or Happy Halloween, Edwina, or whatever, whoever it's going to. And then right here where it says your logo, we can either change that to nothing, or we can go up here and click on an image. And then we can choose any image we want. We can upload images for you guys who are using the VPAA web services templates. It looks pretty familiar to you up there. And then we can add anything we want as an image. Now we can actually cut this and resize it. And we can pretty it up and do anything. And all the images are editable. So if you click on it, you can change that image, um, add new images to it, take away some images if you don't like those. You can come in here and say, join us for our party anything that you want there. Then we're going to hit save. And what this will do is it'll actually save that newsletter. We'll close it out. And now the newsletter has been personalized. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to sending. And then we're going to hit send to mailing list. When we're sending to the mailing list, you're going to be able to choose which list you want. We're going to choose the kids' Halloween bowl. You're going to tell it where the email is coming from, and it's likely to be the reply email address that they replied back to. And the next thing you're going to do is have BPA Customer Connect Team. That's going to be the name of the person you're sending from. And then we're going to just have a Halloween. party as the subject line. And then we can actually choose if we had more different templates, we could choose whichever template we wanted um, and then select the newsletter. Now a couple things you can do here, you can check the spam score. This will all help you make sure that uh, you're not high on the spam list. Um, and I recommend checking it because if you're over 0.7, it will actually go into the people's spam folder. And so if you check your spam score, you can actually make the email better so that it doesn't get thrown in so many uh, junk mailboxes. And then you could just hit send. Um, at that time, it would queue it up to send, and within about 8 to 10 minutes, that email would start going out to the people. And well, once it goes out, we can start doing uh, reporting on exactly who's opening it, how often they've opened it, how many of them have bounced, and so you'll see the report right here. It'll show you exactly how many people have opened it and how many people have bounced. Now, on your bounced email list, it does keep up with your bounced emails. And what happens is it sends it back to Customer Connect and then the list that you sent over there, under right here, would if you had any bounced emails or if you have any exclusions, you would actually go right here where this little icon is. And this is a new campaign, so there's no bounce back for us yet. But once they bounce back, they will be entered into Customer Connect as a bounced email. And what happens then is they will not be able to get an email from you. Now, if you excluded them, you can actually go back in there and unexclude them. But if it's a hard bounce from graphic mail, you will not be able to send an email back through them, and so it will not let you allow email. So that is the five-minute version of sending an email. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, you know, that's why we ask for you probably should go with graphic mail because of the built-in capabilities. Um, and then the bounce back coming back, they will actually be marked in Customer Connect. That way you don't have to keep up with all your bounces. If you do an outside vendor, what's going to happen is when you get the bounce back report, you'll have to come back into Customer Connect, and then you'll have to manually go in there and mark each user as an exclusion. So that is the, the email marketing program.
let's go back in here. I want to go over a couple of more of the uh, criteria over here for plans. So we're going to go to a new email list. You can do this thing from when they got entered into Customer Connect. You can do it by their birthday. So let's say we want to do a quick birthday month list. Just click on that. We'll do all the January birthdays. We'll hit Find Matches. And now it's going to come up and show everybody that has a January birthday. So we have 389 people who have January birthdays. We're going to call these January birthdays. And we can hit save. And that's how simple it is to do just a birthday list. Now I can actually email that list. I can get the view plans here and go back to your uh, email list. You know, if I want to say, you know, we'll go ahead and mail them a postcard. I can go up here and say mailing plan. Now when I go back to the mailing plan, there's my January birthdays. Click on that. I want to do a label for the birthday cards that I'm sending out. And there's my mailing list for everybody that has a January birthday. Now you'll notice that there's 1130 here and there's 312 in the email. The email will only pull people who have email addresses and then this one will only pull people who have a, a valid uh, mailing address. Same thing with telephone numbers. It will only pull anybody that has a telephone number. So if they don't have a telephone number, they will not appear in that list and vice versa for the email. Some of the other criteria that we can actually use inside of here, you can do each and every league. Now, when you're doing the league down here, You'll notice that all prior sessions are in there. So if you're trying to send out a mailer for prior sessions, you can actually just choose the prior session. So like on a three-man industrial, it's got the 99, 2000, 2003. I can actually just mail to the 99, 2000. Uh, I can do the same thing with any lead. I can go to an interest group. Let's say I have an interest group. Um, let's say I have some uh, say no to drugs. Uh, group going. I can hit select interest group. And this is going to show me all the groups that I have put in here. I can hit say no to drugs and hit OK. And hit find matches. Now you'll notice what's going to happen here is I still have the January birthday month inside. So it's going to pull only the people who are in my interest group that has January birthdays. If I wanted to take that out, I could remove that and hit find matches again. So it's the, all the criteria must meet. So the number will jump from 297 to 2915. So it's because of the January birthday. Um, we can do it by marital status, name, source. I can do a game type, whether they're bowling a bowling game before. Um, if they've been into any of my events before, I can do it by average. So depending on if I have a high average league, I can actually narrow it down that way. So that is the mail marketing program. Um, very straightforward and simple. Again, if you've missed anything in that in the webinar about that today, this will be available online after the webinar. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and move away from the marketing and we can go to do some of the reports. Um, we are adding a lot of different reports. Um, so if you people who have been asking for reports, those are being worked on and will be brought into it. Um, you notice you drop down, you can do a custom report, or any kind of event report. Um, the best one is the lead list, lead rosters, and the intent to return. It's in your lead section. Each bowler has an intent to return section. And I'm going to take you over and show you that before we do the intent to return report. So in the Sunday AM, we can go into participants. And this is going to list all of your bowlers. And it's 
you have two icons right here. You have one to edit the person. If you do that, it's just going to bring up the editing of that person where you can put the household, the game profile, their group, their league activity, the event activity, just like you were entering in a new person. The other icon, when you click on it, it's going to bring up the team information, and it's going to be about this person. So the person, Wilson, here, um, if they're going to return for next year's league, you just mark them as yes, and if they're not, you can mark them as no or undecided. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to do an intent to return report. So, you know, as your league is getting ready to start up, you can go run an intent to return report and see how many of the people actually told you they were going to come back or not come back. Now, remember, it's just the informational to you because in the bowling business, every yes is still a no. So when we go over to the intent to return report, and you hit new, what's going to happen is it's going to present you with all of your leagues, and then you can go down through there, and again, remember, if you double click that, it'll bring the latest ones to the top, and I'm going to run an intent return for the top three here, and we'll hit OK. It's going to go out and find who all is coming back and it's going to print an intent to return for each and every one of the bowlers. Now you can take this down to the, uh, and put it in their envelope and have them fill out the information um, and have them, you know, this way they can update the contact information at the same time whether they're telling you you're going to intend to return or not. So here we have 63 people. None of them were marked as yes, no, or anything, so they all came in. So now I can actually go down and if they say, put the check mark in there, I can mark them as yes and get that going there. So it's an intent to return, um, print out an individual report for each one. Um, in the future, we will be making it to where you can print them all out on one sheet. Um, we did have some people suggest that. Um, the other reports in there that we have are league roster reports, very simple, we do a new You'll be presented with all the leagues that you want. You can select all. You can select one, two, three, or four time. You hit OK. It's going to make a league roster report, and it's going to be by each league. You know, and get their telephone numbers for a calling plan. So it's a very quick call list. Same thing for a people list. You go to people. Go to customers, get new, same criteria. You can do by birthday, by age, to say I wanted all the mails in my database. I'll click on this little refresh button over here. It'll create the document. And I'll have a people list. It's that simple. All you do is take that list, and if they had the telephone numbers, which most of these don't, if they had telephone numbers, you can put those, just call them. It will have their email address and their address, and you can update a lot of different records. You can actually export these documents to a PDF file to print out. Um, we can actually print this out. Um, if we want to send it to somebody, I'd save it as a PDF and go ahead and send it out to them. So the reporting section is very, very simple. Next thing we're going to go over is this, of course, the tools and settings. And this is where a couple of people are confused right now, um, user accounts. You can create user accounts for each person that is in your, that has access to your database. Um, we have a couple of roles set up. And we'll go to set new users. Put in the information. We'll put in the username. And then we're going to select a role. We can be a guest. A guest can change nothing. The manager can change in view, but it cannot go into the tools and settings is where we're at now. And then you have a system administrator that can do anything in the database. So you want to be careful about who you give the access to. Me, I'm going to be a system administrator. And then right here you have a little box that says make them active. And then it's going to ask for the email address as well. 
make sure you put the email address in here because whenever they forget their username or password, they can actually request it and be sent to that email address. Hit save, and now that person is a user for your account and can come in and, and administrate for your custom connect. So um, center details, uh, we didn't go over this much in the last one. I want to go over here. You can put all of your center details, and this is what's going to be putting on all of your marketing letters and any marketing material that gets sent out. This is where that'll be. But the one I want to show you here is the default locations. Um, you requested that you didn't want to keep putting in the use the uh, city, state, zip every time that you added somebody. So you can go to the default locations. Inside of here, you can add new locations. So let's say I had a zip code of 76210. I can put in an area code and what city it's in. And in the state. And then we'll hit save. What this is going to allow you to do is you can Say whenever you put that zip code into your new person, all you would have to type in is seven six two one zero, and it will automatically fill in your city, state, zip um, for you in the default area code. That way, it saves you a little time on your data entry. Um, if for you guys who are going to be doing the graphic mail service, and this here is where you're going to actually put your username and password. We will enter the API password for you. So if you've signed up for Graphic Mail and you haven't gotten your API password, let us know and we will make sure your Graphic Mail is working where you can go back and forth. This is something we need to look in for you. So it was a quick overview um, of some of the features. Um, I hope we didn't go way too fast for a lot of you. Again, this is going to be put out on the web so that you can actually slow it down a little bit and get a little bit more out of it. Um, of course, we're going to be here for you. Um, if you have any questions or any problems, just call the support line. Now, I want to go over some a little bit about the support line. There's a couple of ways to get a hold of us. Just in case we're in a busy period of time, some of the hold times can be 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes at times, depending on how many people are calling in at that time. There's a couple of different ways to get a hold of us. You can call the support line, or you can go out to support.bpahost.com, and that will be provided in after the conference call. I'll let you know what it is. But you can go to support.bpahost.com, and there's an icon that says online chat, and you can do an online chat session with us. That is almost an immediate answer, so you, that's the quickest way to get support. You can also email us you know, at support at bpaa.com. But you can also do an online ticket at the support.bpahost.com. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, it says you create a ticket online. If you create a ticket online, it will actually give you a case number, and that will be passed on to us, and then we will actually answer your message through that, and you can keep up with how the progress of your account is going. So, with that, I'm going to turn this over to a question and answer because I'm sure there's so much questions and answers for you. Um, so we're going to take about a two-minute break to get all the uh, stuff set up for the question and answer session, and then we're going to come back and we're going to answer those questions. So at this time, I'm going to place everybody on hold for just about two minutes, and then we'll come back and answer any questions that you have.
All right. Now we're ready for some questions and answers. And what I'm going to do is, if you have a question, go ahead and type it in. Um, I will read the questions to the audience. And then that way you know exactly what's being asked, and then we'll try to answer as many of the questions as we can. Um, one of the questions I've just had is, are you going to download the Kids Bowl Free for us? What we need you to do for a Kids Bowl Free list is we need you to email that to support at bpahost.com. Now, when you signed up for, gra or for uh, Customer Connect and it started, you were issued a... Uh, case number for the activation. Um, if you don't have it, that's fine. Just let us know. But when you're sending that list in to us, because we will be doing the Kids Bowl free import for you right now, um, go ahead and make sure you put a case number with that so we can tie that back to your account. And another question is, Nudis, does the Customer Connect service come with a graphic mail account, or is it something I have to also have to pay for? Okay, with the graphic mail account, there is a free account over there. It's a very limited account. It gives you 500 contacts, and you can send to 5,000 emails a month. So for some of you, that will be fine. Um, but if you actually move into a paying account, you get some more advanced features, and you also get to send out more. For $39, you can get 5,000 contacts with unlimited amount of emails. With the uh, next plan up, it's 10,000 for 69. And then going up to there, it's 25,499. Um, so yeah, the paid account will actually get you a little bit uh, better uh, advanced features over there as well. So the, the free account is limited in a little way. Can we actually import some other lists on our own? Yes, you will be able to import the list on your own. We are working on some an issue that was coming up in the import function that will be released soon, and then the import function will, you can do on your own. Next one is, when will the current resident be available to insert into mailing labels? I will have to get with the developers on that, but that is being developed as we speak. Um, should be shortly. Can the intent to return be emailed? You can print those out um, and then email them. At this time, there's not a function to actually take the intent to return and email that from inside a customer connect, but you can email it to uh, somebody, and that's a good feature. We'll put that in for future consideration. Okay. When entering new customers, why doesn't the address info city state fill in automatically when zip is entered? Um, we need to get with you if it's not doing that. Um, and make sure we have that set up in the the tools and settings under the center details. If you go inside of there um, on the screen I'm showing and do the default locations. If you put this in here and it's still not showing, please contact us at support and we will figure out and take care of it for you, Julie. Shannon says, can we use a database to text individuals? And if so, is this an upgrade? Yes, you will be able to text individuals. We are trying to finalize the texting service right now. Um, as soon as the texting service is finalized, we will let you know. There will be an additional charge for text messaging. We haven't finalized that yet, so I don't have the pricing for you. But once that is, it will be along the same lines as the graphic mail. Um, really tiered accounts where you can do more different things like that. Okay, if you have a customer connect for each of your locations, can you have one graphic on the account, mail account to be used by all the centers? Also, will graphic mail suppress by email address across those databases they appear in multiple lists? Yes, that's exactly what, uh, Gerald. Um, if you have multiple centers, you can do one uh, graphic mail account and then do it by list. Just be aware that if, if the same email address appears in all three or four centers, 
you know, the graphic mail will only allow the one person with the email address over there, so it becomes it can become an issue. But you can use one account for multiple centers. Is, is all new USB C addresses and phone numbers updated automatically? I've never had the updates available on the home page show up. Yes, Sean, if you don't have it's after you put one piece of data in there. And now let's repeat that question. It says all new USB C addresses and phone numbers updated automatically. I've never had the updates available on the home page show up. If you put one person in there and you come in tomorrow and you do not see the leads are available. Please contact us because then we'll do we'll do two things. We'll check to make sure that there are leagues available from USBC, and if there are leagues available, if usually there's a uh, an issue with the certification number or something, and we can actually fix that pretty quickly and bring those in. So if you do not have your USBC address, phone numbers, and stuff coming down, contact us. Let us take a look at it, and we'll make sure you get your leagues. And it takes about a 24-hour process, but you have to have at least one person in the database to do that. I hear people typing out there. Do we got some people typing questions in? Um, I have another one that says, when are the updates from USB-C for this year available? Um, they're available just as soon as the national level gets them. So as soon as they're available at national, they will be available to you as well. Okay, here's a question. It says, when I search for a customer by name and they're not in my database, I often want to add them. When I select new, it doesn't carry the name over. How can I do that? Danny, what you're going to do is if you do the quick search, it's not you can't do it. If you do the advanced search and put their first name, last name, and any information in there, as soon as you hit OK, if they're not in your database, what's going to happen is it's going to come up and say, do you want to add them? And any information that you put in for the search will actually be carried over. Now, I have a question about, is this webinar this coming Thursday different than today's? Thursdays will be different. Thursdays is an overview for people who don't have Customer Connect. Um, and it's just a basic overview of Customer Connect. There's not going to be any how-tos. If somebody's on the mail plan, will they also be on the email list? Yes, they will. Um, they are not separate. It's just if you want to email those people out, um, they will appear on the same list if they have the address. Um, that may be a function that we work on in the future where it, you can exclude from each. Um, right now, you'll have to go in there and manually exclude those, but we will be working on something to fix that. Okay, we got some more questions. Okay, I'm gonna leave the question and answer open for just a few more minutes um, and see if some more come in. Are any widgets that allow customers to add themselves to our database via website, Facebook? Good question, Gerald. Now, I should have covered it earlier in the webinar. Um, we do have a uh, couple of modules that are coming out in the next couple of days. Um, not exactly sure when yet. We're still trying to finalize some stuff. Um, one of them is going to be a website widget. You know, on this website widget, you will be able to drag and drop fields and make your own forms. Um, and then you will take that code and drop it onto your website. 
And what's going to happen is people will they go to your website, they'll fill out a party plan or they'll fill out an email list or something like that. And that information will actually be carried over into Customer Connect. So that is coming in the very next release as soon as it's ready. The next module that's going to be coming out with that as well is a new merge duplicates function. Um, we do understand that a lot of you have a lot of duplicates in there um, and we're struggling a little bit with the merge duplicates program. Um, and so we've rewritten the merge duplicate program. Um, I'm highly impressed with what our developers have done with that program. And you will be able to merge your duplicates a lot easier and choose between. We're going to give you the dates that they were entered in. It's going to show you every league that, that each participant belongs to and all the interest groups. And that way you'll be able to merge those together in a better fashion than what we've got now. So the widget is definitely coming. And Michelle, yes, there will be more webinars. This is the first of many. Um, we're going to be scheduling these more often. We're going to be doing some online uh, webinars where you actually interact with the webinars, um, where you can actually, as we're going through the, the program, you're going to be going to the program and it will not move forward until you actually do it and have a skill down. Um, so yes, we are, this is uh, just a basic thing that we're doing right now. Um, we're just super busy trying to get this program out to you guys and get it, uh, all the features that you've requested. Um, we've had hundreds of features that um, we've gotten requests for and so we're trying to put those in as quick as possible but yes we will be every time that we come out with something new um, we're going to be redoing the user manuals and things as well um, and make it a little bit more interactive um, just to let you know there is a blog out on the website and when um, after this webinar is over you'll actually get an email and it's going to have my blog you know my blog I actually put five minute videos together that show features one at a time. Um, it slows it down a little bit and makes just that one feature. So the little five minute videos that show you exactly how to enter in people or a five minute video how to send an email list to graphic mail or a five minute video how to send it to constant contact, gathering data, things like that. George, on the, uh, the question is, is there any way if someone hits the like button on Facebook that it could go straight to this database? Um, we don't have that right now. Um, we might get that in the future. Um, it's just an API between us and Facebook, and right now we've been concentrating on getting all the other stuff done. Um, so what we're doing is after the webinar, we will take this list of uh, features that people are requesting and put it into our bug tracker. And what that is, it's where we put all of our features and then we'll meet as a group and determine when that can happen or if it's going to happen and we'll put out there. So for every new release, you're going to be receiving a uh, to-do list to let you know exactly what we did in this release. And so that will be released on every new release that you get. Gerald and Gerald's asking, are you guys still doing updates on Wednesdays? Yes, we are doing updates on Wednesdays. Just to let you guys know how the release schedule will usually work. Um, it, it's going to be um, we do testing on Mondays, then we'll do internal testing on Tuesday, and then we'll release it to you guys on Wednesdays. And that way we keep up on Thursday and Friday. We still have time if anything goes wrong. Um, so, yes, we do try to get them up on Wednesdays. Okay, I've got time for a couple of more questions. It says, can I export my bowlers from my constant contact email list from the from to the graphic mail program? Most of the contacts are tournament bowlers from outside of my center. Yes, you can export your list from constant contact. You'll go over there and make sure whenever you do the export over there, there's an export function over at uh, constant contact, and you can call me and I can tell you where it's at but you can export it to a CSV file, but make sure that you get the first name, last name, and an email address. Um, a lot of the lists that we got from const, uh, Constant Contact didn't have the first name and the last name. It just had an email address. 
And with Customer Connect, you must have first name, last name, and you must have one point of contact. All right, I got time for about two more questions, and then we're going to go wrap this up. Okay. Well, guys, uh, I appreciate your time today. Um, you, if you stick around and still ask some questions, we will be happy to answer some of them for you. Um, but we're going to wrap the webinar up for everyone else. Um, sorry if we started out a little bit fast for you. Again, if you missed anything, go ahead and let us know. Um, you can call us at support and we can help you out. But we're going to put this webinar out as soon as it's finished processing and you can actually listen to it and follow through again. Um, the last question of the day is, will Customer Connect be integrated into BLS at some point? We will work with Lance and get that in for over there. It's not at this time, but we will work for it in the future. So we're going to be trying to interface with a lot of different vendors. So with that said, um, if you want to hang out and still ask some questions, go ahead and stay in there. But for the rest of you, we're going to go ahead and conclude the webinar. Um, we appreciate your time today, and we will be sending out some more invites, so we would like for you to come in. If there's any suggestions or any problems you're having, please contact us and let us know. If we don't know there's a problem, we can't fix it. So any new features that you want or anything like that. So we appreciate your time today, and we thank you for coming.